uh, the Divas division in the WWE for the better. But the problem I have is WWE are not paying as much attention as I would like to see them paying to people like Caitlyn, who's now uh, getting ready to make that heel turn. I really wish they would have made Kelly Kelly turn heel rather than Caitlyn. Not too struck on that. And now they have AJ in that program with Caitlyn, helping Caitlyn turn heel. Hopefully Caitlyn is going to get a push out of this. Uh, that's what I'm looking to see. But I really don't like how they're uh, having AJ be the one to put Caitlyn over. I think that uh, AJ has a lot of spunk. She has a lot of talent. And she's a talent that's going to waste. And it's not her fault. Uh, in a lot of cases, it's the fault of the management and the creative team. And it's the fault of the creative team in this case because they could be easily booking AJ to win, especially when you're trying to push a new talent initiative. And you have uh, younger divas coming through the door, stronger and, and better divas than what you had before. So why aren't you pushing people like AJ, who probably is considered a Christy Hemme knockoff of anything, uh, but why aren't you pushing her and giving her the momentum she needs, especially when you're trying to market new divas like the Bella Twins and Caitlin and AJ? Why aren't you doing uh, something with them that actually matters and is going to make them a future divas champion? I mean, you're not going to have a Trish Stratus coming through the doors every day. The closest one to it, Trish Stratus, was probably a Molina or Maurice, and you kicked them out the door. So what are you doing with the remainder of your divas that you have? You're making them... Uh, put over people like Natalia and Beth Phoenix who have been there a number of years and you're not going to reproduce a Natalia or Beth Phoenix every day so I understand why uh, you're pushing people like Natalia and, and Beth Phoenix as a team the Divas of Doom, the Divas of Destruction, the Destruction are a few names that have been put on that team uh, doesn't really make much sense to me but I really understand why you're trying to push them really can't make any sense of the uh, team they formed and how they're decimating the Divas division if anything they're put in the place of Austin Kong while they're waiting for her to return off fraternity leave around Wrestlemania time and the Beth Phoenix uh, uh, awesome Kong match at WrestleMania 28 is what we'll probably get out of that. But I really think that you need to stop pushing people like Natalya and Beth Phoenix for the time being and start reproducing uh, good talents for the Divas division. I mean, Alita Trish Stratus is not going to come through the doors every day, and the closest talents you had to that were probably Melina or Maurice, and you kicked them out the door. John Laurinaitis, the one who hires and fires talents, is probably the one we can place the blame on. He's having a bit too much fun, in my opinion, as the Raw General Manager. You can follow him at Twitter.com, Raw General Manager. I, I really think that it's it's a point of, of criticalness now we're reaching in the WWE Divas Division because we're at a limit of fantastic talents because they're not being produced the right way. Um, you know, you're putting them on NXT Seasons 1 through 5, and then some of them win uh, the NXT program and they don't even show up on Raw and SmackDown for months after they win the program. Some of them don't even show up at all. I mean, Johnny Curtis is a perfect example of that. We're still waiting on the debut of Brutus Clay. So really, the NXT shows and the NXT seasons are not paying any dividends to the WWE franchise. If it was paying any dividends to the WWE franchise, we wouldn't consistently see people from NXT Season 1, like Wade Barrett getting over on Randy Orton, people like Heath Slater, although he's being booked to lose, kind of like how DiBiase was kind of stuck in the same uh, kind of ditch, I guess you could call it, for the last uh, six months to seven years, seven months. So I, I really think that it's, it's a problem where we're seeing the same people always pushed uh, from NXT Season 1, Wade Barrett, and that program with Randy Orton. I, I like it, but I'm sick of seeing Wade Barrett in the Barrett Barrage. I mean, you thought if they would have done that, they would have done that probably five months ago. Why is it only now that Wade Barrett, after having a considerable amount of momentum in a program with John Cena back in 2010, is only getting a push now, getting over on people like Randy Orton? I mean, he's beaten Randy Orton several times, both on WWE programming and live shows. So why is it that he's only getting this push now? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, AJ, I really like her. I think she's fun to watch. I think that uh, she's one of the more quicker divas inside of the ring. Uh, you know, there aren't that many quick divas inside of the ring. I mean, the Bella Twins were considerably quick uh, with Twin Magic when they made their debut in their inaugural program with Victoria. When Victoria was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on with the Bellas uh, going under the ring, and then one would pop out and get the win for the other. Switching places, Twin Magic, which is still uh, trending worldwide on Twitter and talked about a lot on WWE programming. It's a formula that works for the Bella Twins, and they stuck with it for a number of years. They've been there consistently long, a considerable amount of time. 
and it's nice to know they've finally got a Divas Championship to their credit, with Brie Bella being the official champion. And for a while there, the Divas division was relying on co-Divas uh, champions. You had uh, Beth Phoenix and Natalya doing it, and uh, in the past you had people like uh, the Bella Twins doing it, and uh, Lay Cool. So, uh, you know, the formulas the Divas division are going with are formulas you might not necessarily agree with, but they're formulas that are working, or at least they're working in the minds of the WWE officials and WWE creative. I don't see AJ sticking around with WWE if they continue to have her go down the same road over the next five years. If they have her go in a totally uh, different direction and have her career take a 360 turn for the better, I think she will be Divas Champion by WrestleMania 29. And, and that's the tentative date I have for AJ to win her first Divas Championship because I really don't like the formula they have for her now. Consistently putting her in the ring in tag matches with a partner that can't get the job done. We've seen her work in tag matches with Caitlyn. We saw that program with Natalia uh, go absolutely nowhere for the two of them. And now it's a program where Caitlyn has apparently turned heel and she's sick of uh, being on the coattails of AJ or having AJ uh, riding on her coattails, whatever way you want to look at it. I think a lot of fans would look at it in the way of AJ riding on the coattails of Caitlyn, who is probably considered the more superior talent, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, where that program goes. Maybe AJ will get the better of her five or six times before Caitlin knocks her off. Um, but I really don't like the direction her career is going in. And if it continues to go in this same direction, down the same road over the next five years, it'll be a long time before we see AJ amount to anything in WWE, and she'll probably be a potential talent who'll head down to TNA Wrestling. Divas from the past, like Mickey James and uh, Victoria have done it. Tara's talking about a number of things on ProWrestling.com in an article that we just recently posted for our news center. Follow us on Twitter at HW Entertainment Jonathan Clark one I, I really think that it's, it's a major problem. The Divas division is in a critical situation right now, and that's why I'm always talking about it here uh, for our audio commentaries, and that's why I'm always writing about it. For our weekly column in this corner with Jonathan Clark, a column on the treatment of AJ and her WWE career and the direction it's headed in is coming up in our column archives for in this corner with Jonathan Clark. We recently talked about the releases of John Morrison and Maurice for recent archives of our column. We had over 200 of them up there. We're talking about a variety of different issues. And the Davis Division is something we're consistently talking about because I really don't agree with uh, some of the treatment of some of the Davis. Caitlin and AJ especially are two people who were a great team. Uh, they had a lot of momentum coming into SmackDown from NXT. Uh, WWE doing their tapings on Tuesday, so it only makes sense that the NXT Divas are moved to SmackDown. But I really think that putting them in a program on SmackDown will put them over, but I don't think they're ready for a weekly program and have uh, SmackDown rely on them for the Divas installment each week for that program. I really think they need more time to develop their skills. I think that the two of them need to be taken off television for about four months and come back completely repackaged because nothing is working for them. The gimmick that's working is the AJ gimmick because it seems like the fans are really getting into the whole video game, internet geek deal. Uh, but uh, Caitlin, in my opinion, really has no personality. She's the one that needs to be taken off television and completely repackaged. Again, I'm not criticizing her for what she's brought to WWE thus far. I just think we need to see a little bit more in terms of personality. I mean, Kelly Kelly was the same way. She went about six months before she picked up a microphone and talked. It's almost like she had a phobia of actually speaking to the fans on a microphone. And Caitlin seems to be the same way. So I really think that microphone phobia in the WWE is a big problem for developing a character. And if you have this phobia, the fucking microphone, why are you on television? It's it's because WWE believe looks sell, and TNA's uh, felt the same way in the past. Not so much anymore, though, uh, as WWE consistently are thinking that. Uh, but but I really think that even though it looks sell, you need to put somebody on there who can be a champion that's not afraid to use the microphone and who's actually able to perform inside of the ring. Kelly can perform inside of the ring better than she could five years ago, but she's still afraid of the microphone. She says maybe five or six words in a video package or in an interview segment. Uh, but I, I really think that, you know, people like AJ and Caitlin need better promo skills and better acting abilities. They can perform inside of the ring. I mean, AJ is one of the quickest young girls I've seen in WWE in years, and I'll consistently put her over the top for that ability and that ability alone, if that's the only thing I see credible 
about AJ, but I really think she has a lot of talent. I mean, she's similar to Christy Hemming in a lot of ways, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that don't agree with me comparing her to uh, Christy Hemming. That comparison can be looked at in a lot of peculiar ways. Uh, but I really think that uh, AJ definitely has similarities to Christy and definitely has similarities to a lot of divas in the past and probably was inspired by people like Trish Stratus and Stacey Keebler, for Christ's sake, kind of like how Kelly was. Uh, but I really think that she needs to be doing something a lot better than what we're seeing her do. And until WWE realizes that, her career is heading down a very uncertain road. And I, I really don't agree with it because I really would like to see her be a top contender for the Divas Championship by at least WrestleMania 29 or sooner. If they can do it for Kelly Kelly because all the Maxim Magazine photo shoots and the uh, Maxim uh, top lists and shit like that, they can do it for someone like AJ. I know she hasn't been on as many magazine covers and isn't that well known, uh, but give her time. I mean, Candice Michelle ended up on Playboy, Tori Wilson did, Joni Lauer, a.k.a. China, her in-ring Alice. Um, I, I really think that a lot of divas have done it, either through Playboy or some kind of talent they possessed. Uh, the Bellas rely on, on twin magic. Natalia relies on a uh, submission uh, technical ability that she has perfected over the years, like many of the Hurts. Beth Phoenix relies on power. There are a lot of divas that consistently rely on one thing. Eve Torres relies on the martial arts background and the gymnast background she has. Kelly relies on the same arsenals. Uh, as it relates to gymnast techniques. So I really think that Diva's rely on a lot of stuff. AJ's got a lot to rely on. It's just WWE need to start paying attention to those credible abilities that deserve credit. Uh, I really think that she's headed down a very uncertain road, and if she continues to head down this same road, her career and the direction it's headed in will remain very uncertain. You can follow her on Twitter and Facebook. She keeps up with her fans and uh, tries to... Uh, Keep you up to date on what's happening with her career, although not much is happening for her. I was happy to see her as one of the divas WWE had considered to put on television because I think she has a, a credible amount of talent and an incredible uh, personality at that. Uh, someone that I would love to meet, but I really think that WWE really need to start paying attention to the stuff she deserves to be credited for. And until they do that, we're going to see people like her and Caitlin and a number of other divas who are in the same position head down a very uncertain road, a very dark road with no light ahead for them. And that's the unfortunate thing. Again, I don't want you to go away or walk away from this audio commentary here on YouTube.com, Jonathan Clark 22. Check out the AJ graphic we have for the video. Pretty cool, a photo taken from WWE.com's photo gallery of AJ. I don't want you to go away from this audio commentary thinking that I'm criticizing people like uh, Caitlin and AJ. I just really wish WWE would treat them better. You can join the conversation at Facebook.com, Jonathan Clark, and let me know what you think about it, because I think the treatment of the Divas is absolutely unacceptable in WWE. I mean, I just recently saw a tag match featuring Kelly Kelly and Alicia Fox against the Bella Twins. We've seen a lot of matches involving Kelly and the Bella Twins over the last six months. And the match was about 2 minutes and 30 seconds with uh, Alicia Fox getting a pinfall victory over one of the Bella Twins. I'm not sure which one it was. Maybe if you paid more attention to the match than I did, uh, you know which Bella she pinned. But the problem I had with it uh, were the Divas of Destruction. Natalia and uh, Beth Phoenix came out, did a jog uh, uh, segment where they jogged around the ring. The match was about 2 minutes in length. Alicia Fox gets the win. She's the one getting put over. And it's like the other Divas in the match didn't even matter. I mean, what the Christ, the match was probably two minutes and a half, and that's as long of a match we're getting uh, when it comes to the Divas here lately. Uh, we're lucky we get an eight-minute match on Superstars, and it has to be the main event.